Hi guys, it's Andrea from Strength Evolution, here to provide you with workout number three in our home workout series. I'm here in my home with a space available to me for a workout, and I hope that you have a space in your home that allows you to safely work out um, when you do your home workouts. I have about six feet here, so I think that's you know about the right amount of space that we need these days. Um, and hopefully you have that as well. Um, additionally, you should be in comfy clothes like you would be for a strength evolution workout and wearing tennis shoes um, so that you can perform the exercises um, safely. Okay, so um, thank you so much for the feedback that you've given us on our first two videos. Um, we have received that feedback and appreciate it. I am going to go through the entire workout today um, with a complete set of each exercise. I'm going to give you additional options um, in the workout that you can do, but for the most part we'll do everything in a complete set. If you feel like one set of 10 is not enough for you, feel free to pause the video and do another set before you move on or some or possibly more repetitions and more sets, whatever works for you. Okay, so make sure your space is ready and you're ready to work out. Um, we are missing our workouts at Evolution. Um, and I know that many of you come to us for our back and neck machines specifically. Um, you're missing out on some of those exercises every week and I know that that's, that can be uh, stressful to you. So today I really wanted to talk about posture. We're going to add some stretches for um, neck and back as well as some um, exercises to hopefully promote better um, core strength as well as an overall body workout. Um, also then the focus on posture. Okay, so without further ado, we're gonna work out first with our neck. We're gonna do some neck exercises. So um, with these exercises, the stretches will be about 30 seconds. If you feel like you can do a little bit longer, go feel free to, I just don't want the video to get too long. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna tip our head to the side here. We're gonna grab our, uh, use our hand from the opposite side and just start a stretch. If you feel like that stretch isn't deep enough, take the arm from the opposite side and just push your heel of the hand into the ground. So again, these stretches are gonna be about 30 seconds. Now, if you wanna create an exercise out of it, you can take your hand and push your hand down and then resist it with your head and kind of push up it into your hand like that for an exercise if the stretch isn't enough. All right, so release everything here. Go to the opposite side. Again, that hand comes up over the top and pulls it in, pulls it to the side here. The hand comes down and the heel of the hand pushes into the ground for that deeper stretch. And you're gonna hold this stretch for about 30 seconds. And again, if you wanna create an exercise out of this for your neck, you can push your hand against your neck against your head and push the hand into the hand or push your head into your hand and create that tension there for more of an exercise. Okay, now additionally, we have our neck extension machine that creates um, the motion, the forward and backward motion. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go forward with our chin tucked down into our chest. And you're gonna take your hand on the top of your head and push down to provide a little bit more of a stretch. And again here, if you want to create tension rather than just stretching and make an exercise out of it, you can push up into the back of your hand and create that tension. I would create that tension for about two seconds at a time and rest and then come back up two to five seconds. Good. Now we're going to go back with that stretch, tipping your head back, hand up on the forehead, pushing back to get that additional stretch. Now, if you want to create an exercise out of this, again, you're going to push your hand into your forehead, but can then kind of try and lift your head and create that tension. Again, two to five seconds for each of those. Good. Okay. And now we're done with the neck. Okay. So, posture. A lot of us at home are in uh, working from home for the first time, potentially have ergonomically incorrect um, workstations, we're getting hunchy. Um, in addition, a lot of our stuff these days is everything is forward, right? We drive a car, everything's forward. We're on our, our computer, everything's forward. We're looking at our phone, we're looking at our 
right head and then forward, forward. So we really want to open up the chest muscles. Those the chest muscles get so tight because they're they're always forward and crunching forward, right? So we want to open them up. So hands up here. We're gonna bring our hands behind our head, opening up the chest muscles. Now I want your hands at the base of your neck because this is where you're gonna feel more of a stretch. You're gonna kind of push out here. So you can see from the side pushing out. If your hands are more up on top, you're gonna to feel more of that stretch in your shoulder. We really want them down here because we wanna feel that stretch through the chest, okay? So again, 30 seconds is about how long that stretch should be. If you feel like it can be longer, feel free to do it longer at home. Okay, an additional stretch here from the chair is a hamstring stretch. You're gonna bring one, one foot should be foot flat on the floor, the other foot is out in front, heel to the ground, toe pointing up, and you're gonna take your hand from that same side and reach towards your toe. Now, we don't wanna to get too slouchy, slouchy, so you're gonna keep that back straight and reach towards the toe. I can't reach my toe. My hamstrings are pretty tight. But if you can reach your toe, go for it. Again, we want the stretch to be about 30 seconds long on each side. You should feel the stretch through the back of the thigh here, the hamstring muscle, good. Switch sides now, the other foot comes flat. This one digging, heel digging uh, into the floor, toe pointing up, same side, arm reaching. Again, you're feeling the stretch on the leg that's straightened out here, that's extended in the back of the leg where the hamstring is. Reaching towards the toe, if you can reach the toe, great. If you can't, that's okay too, good. And again, about 30 seconds. All right, so those are some stretches for today. I'm gonna move my chair out of the way. And now we're gonna go down um, into the yoga mat. Again, I have very simple um, equipment needs here. Um, like John and Patrick, I just have a yoga mat, a towel, some water bottles, a chair, really not um, requiring a whole lot of equipment for this workout. Okay, so this um, stretch now is called child's pose. Our toes are going to be together. Heels are going out. I'm creating a space in between my thighs for my body to come forward. Arms up and over the top. I'm going to stretch forward. And you really want to reach forward. You're going to feel that stretch through your lower back, all the way up into your back, through your shoulders. And you're going to really reach forward with your hands. Really relaxing and stretching all the way through, finding, feeling that stretch. Good. And for the sake of time here, you're going to keep your head also down into a neutral position. For the sake of time, you're going to keep those stretches at 30 seconds, but feel free to do that longer. Okay, so now that we've done some stretching, and I hope that's provided you a little bit of relief, we can move on to some exercises. We're going to do core exercises first. So the first thing I'm going to do is bird dog. So we're going to be here on our all fours. Your wrist should be directly below your shoulders, okay? Uh, knees directly underneath the hips in a, like a tabletop position, okay? So with bird dog, you're going to reach your foot out and stretch it out as straight as you can get it, keeping that back in a neutral position. And you're going to take your opposite hand and reach and stretch, reach with your hand, reach with your leg for about two to five seconds and then bring that back down. Now, if you can't add the arm, if your balance isn't great and you if feel unstable, just do it with your leg. But if you can add the arm, great. All right, again, hold for two to five seconds and then you bring it down. Now, to add a little bit more of a challenge, if you're up for it, you can either put a weight in your hand, like a can of, um, a can good, or a weight if you have it, or you can add a crunch at the end, so you're bringing the elbow to the knee. Okay, again, we're gonna do everything in, a set, in sets of 10, if we can, and we're gonna crunch, good. So that's two on each side. Three, reaching out, keeping it level. Head in a neutral position, crunch. <clears throat> Good, okay, so that's round number four. Good, really reach and stretch. Feel that stretch through your abdomen. Good, and your lower back, great job. That's four, good, round five. Reaching, keeping your head in a neutral position. Very good, good job. Six. Good, all right. Nice level as you can get it, reaching every time. 
Good. Reaching, good. Eight. Nicely done, good. Nine. Again, if this is too challenging for you, then you just do the leg out. Good, last one on each side. And in that crunch, awesome. Okay, so that is called bird dog. And again, there's a few variations there. That's one set of 10. All right, so now we're gonna move on to bicycle for our core. <clears throat> so bicycle, um, you'll be in a supine position on your, on your back here. Hands go behind <clears throat> the neck, but you don't wanna pull up on the neck. You don't wanna challenge your neck like that. Knees are gonna be starting up on top and your legs will eventually go in what is like a bicycling position. Then you're gonna add the elbows to the knees and cross over. So that's what we're gonna do, 10 on each side. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. All right. So that's the bicycle. So we went from bird dog to bicycle for core. Okay. Now we're going to move on to lower body. We're going to do glutes. So we're going to get back into that tabletop position. <clears throat> and again, hands with your wrist directly below your shoulders, knees below the hips. We don't want any like arching in the back or sagging or butt sticking out. Everything should be neutral. So keep that back nice and flat as much as you can. And we're gonna do, we're gonna work on the, uh, the glutes, like I said, and work on donkey kicks. So this, the first leg comes up into a, like a 90 degree angle. And we're gonna point it down to the ground without touching the ground and then push it up. You wanna feel this in your glutes. So we're gonna do a set of 10 on each side. This is three, four. Again, keeping a nice neutral position. You don't wanna lean to one side or the other. This is eight, nine, and 10. Good job, okay. Switch sides are here. We're going to point it down to the ground and push up. And two, three. Knee does not make contact with the ground. All right, I lost track. Seven, we'll say. Eight, nine. Really feel that tension in your glute. Okay, good job. Ten. All right, so those are also called donkey kicks. Um, if you need to look them up. Okay, so abduction is next. So now we're gonna go into um, lateral leg lifts. You'll be lying on your side. So um, <clears throat> you can get your top comfortable. I usually have my head resting in my arm here. And I'm not sure if my chair's in the way though. Let's push that out of the way. All right. All right, so now everything should be parallel. So starting with your feet all the way up through your hips and your shoulder, it should be nice and parallel. Feet are in a neutral position. They start on top of each other, toes pointing forward. Your hand can be here if you need to balance yourself, but we don't wanna lean forward and we don't wanna roll back. Everything should be parallel on your side. And we're gonna work on the abductor muscle, the outer thigh here. So we're gonna raise it up. Don't need to go way up high, that's not gonna do it. Really right here up to just about 45 degrees. And that works the abductor muscles. Good, three, keeping that toe point forward. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Awesome, okay. Switching sides, work the other side. Again, laying on your side, head supported. Everything is parallel, toes pointing forward. And we're gonna start with the toe pointing forward here, abductor muscles. So again, it doesn't need to go too much higher than this. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Excellent, okay. So now we're gonna work the inner thigh. So, you can put your foot behind you and do the inner thigh like this. 
However, I think it's more comfortable to bring my tap leg and rest it over the tap. Okay, so that's where I'm gonna be. Again, lying on your side here. Everything's coming from the inner thigh and the bottom leg. So we're toe pointing forward. We're gonna raise that leg. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Switch sides. All right, flip over. Again, lying on the side. I'm gonna bring my foot in front. I'm on my side, parallel, everything's parallel. Good, we're not laying forward or back. Toe pointing forward and we're working on the bottom leg of the inner thigh. There's two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, so now, before we leave the mat, um, that was a bunch of leg stuff. Now we're gonna work on a little bit of scapular stabilization. So we're gonna do what are called um, prone T's. So prone meaning you're lying on your face um, on um, your yoga mat. That's where a towel will come in handy to rest your forehead on a towel. Okay, so we're gonna go down into our prone position on our bellies. Make sure you have enough room to get your arms straight out to your sides. Your hands will be in a fist position straight out from your body, so in a T position. So a fist with your thumb pointing up. So fist forward, thumb pointing up on both sides, okay? So we're gonna be down here on your forehead and you have your arms straight out from your side. Your head will raise with your arms, you really want to work on the scapular muscles, your shoulder blades. Try not to have the tension here in your in your traps um, or in your lower back, certainly not in your neck. So here we go, straight out. And we're gonna lift up and hold that for two and back down. So we're lifting straight up for two and then down. Good. This is number three, good. Head in a neutral position, lifting up with the arms, good, four. Five, squeezing the shoulder blades together. Six, good. Seven, eight, So, if that wasn't challenging enough for you, you could add something as sim uh, simple as a water bottle um, to your hands or a hand good. That would create a little bit more weight and tension. But, all right, so those are called prone teeth. Now, we're gonna do a little bit more um, upper body stuff. So I'm gonna get rid of our yoga mat for now. We're going to do what's called a tricep push-up. Okay, so tricep push-ups <clears throat> find a wall space and instead of a push-up, a normal push-up where your elbows go out and you're using your chest muscles, muscles to push you back and forth, you're actually going to use your arms are going to be flush against the wall and you're going to push up and back using only your triceps. So this is called a tricep push-up. So here you are, hands straight on the wall. And the further out your feet are, the harder the, the exercise will be, okay? So find a comfortable position. Again, if you're way out here, it's gonna be harder. If you're way up here, it's gonna be a lot easier. So comfortable position, arms flush with the wall, like I said, and then we're gonna push off of the wall. Hands remaining in place, and then you bring the forearms to the wall and push back out. That's three, okay? Four. Five, keeping the core nice and strong. Feet are about shoulder width apart. That's seven. Eight. Nine, if it's too hard, move your feet a little bit closer. Ten, okay. So, ten tricep push-ups. Okay, so 
we're going to go on to using our chair again. Okay. And this is where our water bottle will come in handy. Okay, so water bottle is handy. Uh, a weight if you have one, possibly a milk jug. It's a little bit heavier than a water bottle. Um, but um, this is called a bent over rope. So you just need the weight in one hand. Find a counter or a chair to lean up against. Keep the back nice and strong. Neutral position here. You don't want to slouch. Keep it nice and straight. So one foot in front of the other. The foot that's forward is the opposite arm that's going to drop down. And you're going to point your elbow straight up to the ceiling. And these are called bent over rows. Again, working on those shoulder blades, pulling them back. Good. Good work for posture. Muscles. Keeping them nice and strong. Okay. Again, we do a set of 10. I think we're on seven. Okay, just poking that elbow straight up to the ceiling, nine, ten, and don't switch. The other foot forward, weight goes in the other opposite hand, and again, keeping that back nice and neutral, you're going to poke that elbow up into the ceiling, hand comes straight down with the weight, four, five, if you need a heavier object, find one in your home that works, seven, eight, We're also gonna, so that, that, that's it for, mostly it for upper body. We've got two more exercises left. Um, number one, we've got balance. If you're one of my clients, you know that I love to work on balance. Okay, well, it's gonna continue in our home. So if you're not super comfortable with balance and you're a little bit nervous about not being able to sustain that balance without an object in front of you, then use a chair or a counter. We're gonna go from one foot to the other. So here I am on one foot, and I really just want you to sit here and balance on one foot for 30 seconds. I'd like you to do that, you know, one on each side, okay? And then you're going to switch. Now, if you need to, you know, tap every so often, that's fine to catch your balance. Um, just don't do this without something in front of you if you're not comfortable with balance, okay? Now, for those of you who are okay with balance and you want an additional challenge, we're going to actually do 10 on each side of a challenge here. So we're going to bring our, we're going to be on one foot, our leg comes up in front of us, we're going to clap our hands up here and then underneath the leg and then we switch. Clap our hands up and then down. So that's one set. Those ankle receptors are firing. Good job. Two. That's three. Four. On each side here now. Think about that one. Jabs is eight. Nine. And ten. Boom. There's some balance work for you at home. Okay. Now, well, last but not least, we're going to work it out. Uh, uh, variation of a plank. Okay, so this is going to be a plank position. Um, these are called plank jacks, similar to a jumping jack, except you're in plank position. So arms out in front of you in a plank, straight arm plank position. Can you see me? Let me go back up a little bit. All right, your feet start here and they're going to jump out like a jumping jack, okay? So we're going to go out and then bring them in, okay? Keeping those arms nice and solid. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Okay, guys. That's all I got for you. That's a workout. Good. So as you can see, my heart's pumping. Your heart hopefully was pumping too. I hope this provides you a good workout, a good release from the stress and anxiety that we have. Stay healthy, stay safe, um, and be well. Uh, we welcome feedback um, regarding any of our, the pieces of our workout, um, and we look forward to seeing you soon.